U.S. looking to sanction China even further. China promises retaliation. Is U.S. and China heading towards an economic cold war? And if so, what will happen to Canada? So as we all know, for the past years, U.S. and China have been engaging in a trade war where they were putting taxes on each other's products. Now, even though a deal was reached some time later, the tension between these two countries have not really reduced and instead have been slowly building up based on different issues. And last week, due to the concern that Hong Kong is being absorbed into China due to the new Security National Act, the tension have reached the peak and U.S. have announced unprecedented sanctions towards China. Now, I'm not going to go into any political discussion here. I just want to focus on the financial aspect and the impact on Canada it might have in the future. So if you're not aware of what the U.S. have announced they're about to do, let me give you a quick recap. I'm going to be pointing out things that caught my eye and in my opinion have bigger impacts worldwide. So number one is they're looking to remove Hong Kong as a special status and remove all the special treatment and privilege that comes with it. So before when U.S. have all these taxes and tariffs on China products, Hong Kong was really the place where it can bypass all that taxes because it was treated as a different system and hence it's different from China. With the removal of this status, anything coming out of Hong Kong directly into U.S. will now be treated as if they're trading with China and the same taxes and tariffs will be applied as well. So this creates a huge issue for Hong Kong business owners who are looking to export from Hong Kong to U.S. from now on. Now, the second thing U.S. announced they want to do is require all the Chinese company who is listed in the U.S. stock exchange to disclose transparent financial reports. So what that means is potentially if any company doesn't meet the requirement set out by the U.S. government, they could be delisted from the New York Stock Exchange. And this is huge because now it can make it very risky to invest into these companies inside United States. Number three is that they're going to come up with a list of people they think are responsible for this situation in Hong Kong and they want to sanction the people plus all the banks that might have ties or are serving these people that are on the list. What that really means is they're cutting off ways and access for these people on the list to be able to move the assets in and out of U.S. freely. And number four, U.S. is going to revise their travel advisory status to Hong Kong. And basically, they're saying that if Hong Kong is part of China, then now there's a lot of surveillance issue and all that stuff is unsafe to be in Hong Kong. This doesn't sound like it's a big issue, but out of all four, I would say this is probably one of the biggest things to pay attention to because when you advise these kind of advisory, what that means is they're telling all the U.S. citizens to leave Hong Kong and come back. And so if the U.S. workers are leaving, then what that means is the companies also will have to leave because there's no one working there anymore. If companies are moving, then also the assets in Hong Kong are also going to be moved. So all the stocks, cash, real estate, anything you can put your hands on, it's also going to exit out of Hong Kong. So these are just the top four out of the many sanctions they have proposed to impose onto China. But looking at this, we can already tell the U.S. is really looking to have an all-out financial war with China and attacking them on all fronts. So what does it mean for Canada? There are a couple of things we have to consider. Number one is if we get dragged into this financial war, then it will affect our import and exporting because we would have to impose similar sanctions onto Hong Kong and China. Given the fact that we're neighbors to the U.S., I think it's going to be really hard for us to say no if U.S. demands us to join this financial war. And also given the recent handling of the CFO from Huawei in Vancouver, we're already in a pretty bad relationship with China. I think it's going to further add a negative impact to our economy and GDP in the long run. The next point which is more relevant to us, I think, is with U.S. poising to take on China and really forcing people to take money out of Hong Kong, this might trigger a domino effect. Because if I'm talking about this right now, that means a lot of other people know about this as well. And if they have any financial interest in Hong Kong, they might be looking to cash out as quick as possible before assets have any chance to depreciate. And this will also include people from other countries like Canada, UK, Australia, all over the world. And in fact, we're seeing exactly this right now. In Hong Kong every day, people are lining up for hours looking to change their Hong Kong dollar to other currency that they perceive are safer. Which brings me to the third and most important point is Similar to the video I made right here before talking about the future of Canadian real estate, 
in there i mentioned that because us have been injecting money into the market we likely will see a spill over especially the real estate market because that's exactly what happened in 2008 so the massive exodus in cash is going to add towards this trend when everyone is cashing out their money holding as other currency they would have to look to invest in other places and the top foreign country people perceive to be safer are places like australia uk and canada so we might see even more hot money more so than the 2008 because right now not only are companies trying to exit out of hong kong but individuals are also looking to exit as well now just before i uploaded this video uk have announced that they're going to extend the bno status to all the hong kong people born before 1997 what that essentially means is they're saying they're willing to take on hong kong people that are looking to leave their home this actually applies to about 3 million people in Hong Kong. So that's about half of the population being able and assisted to leave Hong Kong ASAP. Now, obviously, UK is not going to absorb all 3 million people. So you're going to also be looking at US, Australia and Canada helping with this process if it does happen. Now, according to an article by Quartz in 2008, Hong Kong actually has the highest number of people in the world that has $30 million or more in net worth. With everyone looking to cash out, we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars in assets. And they will have to be kept somewhere else, preferably making a return as well. Uh, what's a better place to put it than a Canadian real estate market? So in conclusion, I think in long term, our trade and economy is definitely going to take a hit from this. But on the other hand, if money spill over into our Canadian market, I see our asset price further increase in the future. And it would just add to a vicious cycle and reinflating the housing bubble that is already existing. So do you think the US is going to follow through? If they do, will that lead to a mass exodus? And will it have any effect on our Canadian economy? Now, if you're interested about the Canadian real estate market, like I said, you can check out the video I made here and also a video I made recently on here looking at an invisible crash that might be happening in the Vancouver and Toronto market right now. All right, this is Jackie Cook. I hope you found this interesting. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Now, I just want to give a quick shout out on the music you heard. It's actually made by a very talented musician called Carlo Aspen. I've linked his website down below. So if you're a YouTuber, you're looking for royalty-free music or intro music, check out his website down below.